Okay, so in the first video for this chapter, we talked a lot about a parametric equation of a line and how that helped us move points along a line. Um, and we really dove deep into that new idea. So today I'm gonna kind of bring it all together because I wanna look at the various different forms of equations of lines and how we can convert back and forth between them, including parametrics. Okay, so here are some of the equations of lines that we've had, you've had in the past. Okay, obviously slope intercept form, that's probably the one you're most comfortable with. Um, M is the slope, so M gives you the change in Y over change in X. And the B value is your Y intercept. If you wanna do a graph for this, you literally just plot the point on the Y axis for your Y intercept, and then you can use your slope to move from that. Slope intercept, pretty easy. Not too bad. It's also, this one is nice when you want to be able to see the rate of change and you want to see, be able to see your starting value. So again, if you want to be able to easily see the rate of change and easily be able to see your starting value. And by that, I mean, you know, when X is zero. Okay, then we have standard form. This one you might not be as uh, comfortable with or as used to, but you should have seen it. And this is really important. First of all, A, B, and C are all integers. That's why they're capitalized letters. So note to self, these have to be capital letters. And, um, and A is supposed to technically be a positive value. So for example, you know, 3x plus 5y equals 2 would be a line in standard form. Um, it's nice because there's no fractions. Um, if you want to find an intersection point between two lines, standard forms are very easily to, easy to do that because you can use linear combination. So standard form is so nice just because, again, you're not really using fractions. So that's standard form. Okay, this next one you're probably not as familiar with. This is called double intercept form. It's little known and little used, um, but it gives us basically the two intercepts in one moment. So if I want to change an equation into standard form, uh, or excuse me, from standard form, for example, I'll use the one I just did, to double intercept, you basically need to make that C value 1. So in this case, I would have to divide everybody by 2. And then technically, that would give me 3 halves x. But if I wanted to put, I could put that 3 in the denominator, so I would actually make it x over 2 thirds. And then the y would become y over, the 2 is on the bottom, I would bring the 5 down, 2 fifths. So you could easily see, oh, the x-intercept, which is when y is 0, is at 2 thirds, and the y-intercept is at 5 halves, or excuse me, 2 fifths. So it's a way to get the, the quick, it's, it's an easy way to plot, because you can quickly see what the uh, intercepts are on each axis. Not a lot of the use there, but we do, that is another form. And then the ones that you learned in the last video, which are parametrics. So parametrics tell you your starting point, and then they tell you how much you change moving along the line according to a distance D that you wanna go. So again, this is ideal if we wanna travel a particular distance along a line and figure out where we uh, arrive. It also helps if we're trying to find like our location relative to the points that we already have. So that's what parametric is nice for. Okay, so again, it's important to know these different versions because sometimes it'll be more useful to use one over the other. I will tell you, we tend to use standard form in this unit and parametric form in this unit a lot. Those are just the easy ones, which is kind of interesting because those weren't the ones that you have been using the most in all of your algebra. Um, but it is ones that we do quite a bit. So we're obviously going to want to convert back and forth between them. We're going to convert them into parametric so we can work with points on lines. Um, we're also going to find intersections of them and all that good stuff. So that's where we're headed today. Okay, so let's start with converting things that we already know are in parametric back to standard form. This is actually pretty easy. Um, okay, so think about this what would we want to see happen if we go from something which is in parametric remember parametric has this extra parameter so instead of just having x and y as variables you have this d um, to rectangular so what do we want to do well if we want to go from parametric to rectangular or standard we want to get rid of this extra parameter d so that's what we're trying to get to cancel out so if you think about it i mean you could pause this and kind of think of some different ways to do this 
One way that people might say is, well, I could solve for D in one of the equations. So maybe like in this first one, I could subtract three. I could multiply by the reciprocal. And then once I get D, I could plug it into this equation. So this is like just basically substitution. Yep, you could absolutely do that. So if I multiply this out, it actually comes out fairly nice because these cancel. So I get plus 5 sevenths, x minus 3. Now we want to go to standard form. So I need to bring the x's and y's to the same side. So I have to actually multiply this out. So I get 5 sevenths x minus 15 sevenths. I'm going to multiply everybody by 7 to make this a little easier. Everybody. And then again, I'm going to bring the x's and y's to the same side. Um, I like to keep, you, you really should keep that x term positive. So I'm going to leave the x's over here. I'm going to bring the 7y over. And then I'm going to take these two guys to the other side. So if I put these two together, I get negative 43, but I'm going to bring it to the other side. So there we go. Okay, so there's my standard form version. That's one way. There is another way that we could do this. And this one I actually use quite a bit. I find it very efficient. And that is I want to get the D values to cancel. So I'm going to multiply by something for both equations so that when I add these equations together, the Ds will cancel. So for example, if I were to multiply this guy by a 7, this would become a 35 over root 74. So this would need to be multiplied by a negative 5 so that it will be. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So let me do it. So then that, this would be negative 5x. Everybody gets multiplied by a negative 5. This becomes negative 35 over root 74d. This one gets multiplied by 7 every term. Do you see what's going to happen here, folks? When I go to add these two equations, because of the fact that I chose 7 and negative 5, these two will cancel out the d value. So it's the same kind of idea. I'm trying to cancel d. But check this out. This is almost already in standard form. In fact, the only reason it's not in standard form is because technically a isn't positive. So if I divide everybody by a negative 1, I would be in the exact same standard form. This is my method of choice to convert, is to get those d values to be the same and then cancel them out by adding. Well, the same but opposite signs, obviously. Okay. Okay, so that's that's a conversion. So we're going to change gears for a second and talk about um, things that we can get from the line from parametrics. Okay, so if we needed to name just one point on the line, where could you get it without doing any computation? So um, let me put the equation back up here. I think I had, actually, I'll just copy and paste it down here. So I know I have some other stuff here, but you'll be able to see. I think it's going to paste it at the top, so I'll have to come bring it down. Yep. Okay. So once again, if we had our parametrics, if we wanted to get, I'll, I'll rewrite it. If we wanted to get just a point on this line, where could I find a point? Yeah, I could find it right here. This point, 3, negative 4, is the initial point on the graph. So that's an easy way to get a point. What if we wanted to get more points on the line? What would be an easy choice to help us get more points? Well, we'd have to plug in d values. But I would pick d values that give me nice, easy things to compute. Like, for example, positive root 74 or negative root 74. Why? Well, then you're just adding 7 because the root 74s would cancel. So 3 plus 7, boom, 10. Negative 4 plus, again, if it was root 74, it'd be negative 4 plus 5, 1. If you did the negative version, it would just make it a negative 7 and a negative 5. So negative 4 
3 minus 7, and negative 4 minus 5, negative 9. So basically, if you plug in multiples of the lambda, you can easily get more points on there. Okay. Um, what if we wanted to know the slope of the line, but we didn't want to have to use points to compute it? Meaning, like, now that you have two points, obviously you could get the slope between those two points. Where is the slope actually lurking in the parametric equations? Remember, guys, slope is change in x over change in y. Well, we know that if we have both of these, and this is important that they're over lambda, then the change in x is right here. Oops, I totally put that backwards, didn't I? Change in y, sorry, over change in x. That was almost a huge failure. Change in y over change in x. Your change in y is in this numerator, and your change in x, change in y is in this numerator, and your change in x is here. Be careful, make sure you have change in y over change in x. So my slope would be 5 sevenths. But this is true because they're both over lambda. Sometimes we can reduce fractions, so you got to be really careful that they are both over lambda. But another way that you could get this is to do, this is technically all the change in x, and this is technically all the change in y. So we could have done change in y as 5 over root 74 over 7 over root 74, and then obviously the root 74s would cancel. So we also have other name, we have another symbol form for each of these, and that was using the directional cosines from yesterday. So the slope is also C2, which is the directional cosine for Y over C1. Again, it's the same thing as change in Y over change in X. So all of these are just how much you're changing vertically over how much you're changing horizontally. That's it. So there's kind of your slope lurking. Again, just making sure that you're doing Y, change in Y over change in X. Okay. All right. How about what if we want? A lot of times we want to know um, if lines are parallel or perpendicular. Um, so let's see if we can find some ways to do that. And we're going to start with it rectangularly and then we'll do it parametrically. Okay. So what do you guys know about lines that are parallel to each other? What do you know about their slopes? They have the same slope. That's exactly right. So if you have y equals mx plus b, then obviously that's really easy to tell whether or not two lines are parallel. If they have the same slope, then they're parallel. Yay, and if they don't, they're not parallel. So in standard form, where does my slope reside? So we kind of have to figure that out. Um, so we're gonna start with our standard form, ax plus by equals c, and we're gonna convert this into slope intercept so we can see it. Um, okay, so let's let's convert. So the first thing I would do is move the x over, so negative a x plus c. Then I would divide both sides by b. Again, this is so that I can get it into slope intercept. So check it out. What we notice is, remember, we're only worried about the slope right now. What we notice is that the slope of a line is negative a over b using a and b from standard form. So if I had 3x minus 5y equals 18, and I wanted the slope of that line, I could do negative a, which would be negative 3, over b, or 3 fifths. Make sure you realize that it's negative a over b. OK, cool. So. What about perpendicularity? You guys already know stuff about perpendicular, um, and that's this is not that hard. If I wanted two things to be perpendicular, you guys know that the slopes, you, you probably are more familiar with saying like opposite reciprocal. Like for example, if one slope is two fifths and the other slope is negative five halves, most of you are very comfortable with that being perpendicular. Um, so that is true. Another way that we can write that is that m1 equals negative 1 over, or I'm sorry, the slope of the second one would be negative 1 over m1, so basically the negative reciprocal. Or the last way is if the two, when you multiply them, if you multiply an opposite reciprocal with itself, you should always get negative 1. So that's another easy way to do that. So how, what would that look like then? in standard form. Well, let's think about it. If you guys just told me that negative a over b 
is the slope. If I wanted to do the perpendicular, then that would mean that the slope should be the negative reciprocal of that, b over a. Let's see how that affects the standard form. I'm not going to worry so much about this, but let's see how that would affect standard form. If I tried to move that over, I would bring this over to this side, so I'd have negative a. Well, actually, what I would do probably first is multiply everybody by a. So I'm going to multiply everybody by a. I'm just looking at what happens to this. I know this one is all sorts of crazy, but don't worry about this part. We're really worried about these guys. Okay, and then if I brought this over, again, don't worry about this guy. This is what I want you to look at. What do you notice? If two lines are going to be perpendicular, remember the original was this. What do you notice about these sides? They're exactly the same coefficients, but they're switched, and one of them is opposite. So that's a pretty easy way to tell if two standard forms are parallel. You can also just calculate their slope, but okay. Um, oh, I already did this, this guy. Okay, let's see if we can do the same thing for getting like parallels and perpendiculars in parametric form. Okay, so first off, if this is your parametric version, how would you determine the slope again? Where do we find it? Yeah, remember the slope is the change in y over change in x. Here's your change in y, which is also known as C2. Here's your change in x, C1. And if you have the same lambda, if your denominators are the same, you can again just think of this as change in y over change in x. Okay. So again, you can think about it as change in y over change in x. Okay, so that's where our slope is. Okay, so if we want to, um, again, I, I said that down here, you can do c2 over c1. So if you want to tell if they're parallel, if you want to tell if the two parametric equations are parallel um, to a given line through a new point, um, well, I'm sorry, if we just wanted to tell if they were parallel, we would just need to make sure that this slope this ratio is the same for the two lines. Okay, what if we wanted to write parametric equations for a line that's parallel through a new point? What would we do? Okay, so let's let's try it now. I think we're at the point where we should try one. Okay, so if I used my change in x and change in y, my lambda would be 5 squared plus 1 squared square rooted, so I get square root 26. Remember, this is my change in x, change in y. So that means my lambda would be this guy squared plus this guy squared. Okay, so there's my parametric. So what if I wanted to write parametric equations for, well, um, a line that's parallel, but goes through a different point? So like, what if I wanted to go, this is my original line, what if I want to be parallel to this, but I want to go through like 5, 16. Well, what's the only thing that would have to change in this problem? Well, we would want our initial starting point to be this point you want to go through, 5, 16. And if you want to be parallel, guys, you wouldn't want your change in x or change in y to change. You would want to keep the slope of your line the same, so you would literally just keep this part the same. You would just change your initial starting point. What if we wanted to do the same thing, but we wanted to make it perpendicular to a given line? Okay, well, let's do the same thing. Let's say we wanted to go through, we want to be, we'll call this line one. So let's say we wanted to make a line that's perpendicular to line one, but goes through the point negative seven, three. Well, if you're going to be parametric, that's kind of easy because you can start by saying, well, let's start at negative 7, 3. And then let's think about this. If we wanted to be, if we want our slope to be the opposite reciprocal, then we would want the x and y's. Remember, you want to be opposite reciprocals. So if your original slope is y over x, then that means you would need to change to negative x over y, which means you can switch the x and y's places. 
and one of them would have to change signs. So I always like things to be positive, so I'm going to switch their places. I'm going to make this 1 over root 26. I'm going to make this 5 over root 26. And then one of them would have to change their signs, so it would be opposite. So I'm going to keep this one positive, and I'll switch that one to a positive. So to be perpendicular, they would have to switch places, and one would have to, whoa, and one would have to switch its sign. Okay, they would have to switch places, and one would have to switch its sign. So again, in parallel, everything stays the same except your starting point. Here, I had to switch them and switch their places. Okay. Okay, so let's try some because I think that's the easiest way to kind of figure this out. If you want to try some on your own, I, you can pause it here. I have all the questions ready to go, and we'll come back. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to try it on your own. You paused it, and you're back. All right, so we're starting with parametrics, and we're going to give its rectangular standard form. So again, this one we already did. Um, this is the exact one that I had done from before. So again, I would multiply this by a negative 5, this by a 7. Just to show you guys, again, how we got this. We're going to add this one, so this would be, make sure you multiply everybody. you got to be really meticulous because people make mistakes because they don't multiply each little part by the 7, and then that causes a problem. Okay, so we had negative 5x plus 7y equals negative 43. Again, we like it to be positive for the x value, so I'm just going to divide everybody by a negative 1. Boom. There's my standard form. Okay, now find a rectangular equation in standard form for a line that's parallel and goes through 9, negative 1. Well, if I want it to be parallel, that means I need the A and the B to stay the same. This is a big deal, guys. If you want it to be parallel, you're going to keep 5x minus 7y. Those are the two things that determine the slope. So I don't want to change anything about what determines the slope. What I don't know is what C will be. Again, if I keep these the same, it will be parallel. Okay, if I keep these the same, it'll be parallel. So that's why I'm keeping them the same. So then what am I going to do? Well, 9, negative 1 has to make your equation true. So that means if I plug in 9 for x and negative 1 for y, I'll get what the c value should be. 45 plus 7, I get c equals 52. So my equation would be 5x minus 7y equals 52. So when it's parallel, it's easy. The A and the B stay the same. The C value changes. All right, what if I wanted to be perpendicular? Well, again, if you want to be perpendicular, you need to switch the X and Y's coefficient. So I'll make it 7, and I'll make this 5, and one of them has to change the signs. I'm going to choose to make the negative one positive, and then this one will stay positive. So again, switch them, and one of them switches signs. Then you're going to do the same thing you did. I'm going to plug in my negative or my 9 for x and my negative 1 for my y and solve. And then finish writing my final answer. 7x plus 5y equals 58. So again, major ideas here. If I want to be parallel, keep them the same, solve for the new c. If I want it to be perpendicular, switch them and switch one sign, solve for the new c. Pretty easy in standard form. How about parametric for the line parallel, but through this point? Well, if I want to go through a particular point, you should make that your initial point. So 9, negative 1. If I want it to be parallel, then I want to do the same changes. So I want to keep the change in x and the change in y exactly the same. So I'm going to keep the change in x. Let me double check that one more time. I'm going to keep the change in x 7. And I'm going to keep the change in y, 5. That way it will move at the same amount. Boom, done. Parametric equations for the line perpendicular, but goes through that. Again, go through the points you want to, 9, negative 1. But then to be opposite reciprocals, you'll have to switch their places and change one sign. So I guess I'll choose to change this 5 to a negative. Boom. That would be the perpendicular. Okay. Um, and then the last little piece in this chapter is um, we talk about a way for determining the angle 
formed when two lines intersect, guys. So we, we find the way to find the angle formed when two lines intersect. So for example, I have two lines here. This one is called line one. This one's called line two. And I want to get this angle in between them, which I have labeled theta. Okay. Okay. The way that I can solve this is I'm actually going to use the angles that these lines create with the x-axis. I'm going to call them angle theta one. So here's the angle that line one makes with the x-axis. So that's theta one right there. And then this big angle that goes out to line two is going to be my theta two. First of all, I know if I take theta two minus theta one, that'll give me theta. So that's a big deal. Okay, then I'm going to use ratios. I'm going to use, and I'm choosing to use the tan ratio. Why? Well, you guys know a lot about the tan. The tan of an angle, remember the angle is the angle created where they meet. The tan of the angle is technically a slope relationship. But if we want to find the tangent or express the tangent of theta, remember just a second ago I said that theta is the same as what I get if I do theta 2, which is what I know, minus theta 1, okay? You know from last unit how to expand this, guys. How do you expand a tan difference? Tan of the first minus tan of the second over 1 plus, okay? Remember that. That's an identity. And then here, here this one is the most important part. For line 1, the angle that you create here, which is theta one, that angle, that tangent relationship, guys, this is a really, really big deal. We did this when we did the R theta um, version. The tan of this angle is the ratio of, remember tan is opposite, which would be the Y side over the X side. And guess what? That is just the slope of this line, guys. That's a big deal. The angle that it makes with the x-axis is just the slope ratio of that line. So that means I can replace tan of theta 2 with the slope of line 2 minus the slope of line 1 all over 1 plus the product of their slopes. So I'll show you one in action just so you can see it. Let's say that I have, I'll do, we'll do, we'll do a couple of examples. We'll do first, what if I'm in standard form? 5x minus 3y equals 10, and 2x plus y equals 4. So let's say that I wanted to find the angle formed when these guys intersect. Okay, well, careful. I would start with the tan of the angle of intersection, because that's this, is going to be equal to. Well, I need the slope of the two lines. I'm going to call this line 1 and line 2. The slope of the first line, remember, negative a over b is the slope in standard form, so that would be negative 5 over negative 3, so 5 thirds. Okay, the slope of line 2 also from standard form is negative a over b, so negative 2 over 1, so negative 2. So the tangent of theta equals to so the slope of the second line, negative 2, minus the slope of the first, all over 1 plus their product. Okay. So on top, I get negative 11 thirds. On bottom, let's see here, I get 1 minus 10 thirds, so that's negative 7 thirds. I will multiply by the reciprocal, so I get tan of theta equals 11 over 7. Now, we're not done because that's just the tan of theta. If you want the actual angle, guys, you're going to have to do the tan inverse, which we learned how to do in the last unit. So I'm literally typing into my calculator and I'm making sure I'm in degrees because I'd rather do it in degrees. I'm plugging in tan inverse of 11 sevenths. And remember, you're only going to get out one answer, but there's actually two. So I get 57.5 ish. It's not perfect. And that's one of these angles. How would you get the other angle? Because it could either be this one, which is acute, or this one. Yeah, they're supplementary. So I could just do that um, from 180. So it can either be that, or it could be 122.5. Both of those are technically angles. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll say, just give me the acute angle where they intersect. Um, but technically, when two lines intersect, there are, always are two angles. So if I go back up to the top, there's technically this angle, and then technically there's that. Um, you know that the tan inverse in your calculator 
when you do this, it's always going to give you something acute. If it gives you the negative version, that's the same thing as the positive, so you can just flip it. But there you go. Okay, so you're going to be doing a lot of converting of the equations back and forth. You're going to be doing a lot of like finding where things intersect or find, you know, finding where things are parallel, perpendicular. Remember, finding intersections of lines should not be hard, guys. Like, let me just show you what I mean by that. If I have two lines in standard form, If I want to find the intersection of these two lines, which that's the symbol for intersection, so I could call this line one, line two. So if I want to find line one intersected with line two, and this is how you should note it, and I'm in standard form, use elimination. I would not use substitution. So elimination would be like if I can get out a variable to eliminate. So like if I multiply this whole equation by a negative two, so I'm going to take line one times negative two, that'd be negative eight x minus 2y equals negative 24. Just make sure you multiply everybody. And then I wouldn't even actually have to change line 2. Line 2 could stay the way that it is because they will cancel. Right? You did this. this is called elimination or linear combination. So I get negative 13x equals 6. So I could get x equals negative 6 to 13 and then this one isn't really going to be super nice, but then once you get one of the variables, you can plug it back in. I like to plug it into the original, so I'm going to plug it into this original one over here. And you can absolutely be using your cal graphing calculator here, so I'm going to be doing 12 minus this, which actually ends up being plus, but let me do it quickly. And then I'm going to math to frac that thing. So I got 180 over 13. So there's your point of intersection, negative 6 over 13. And these are not nice. That's going to happen. Sometimes they do come out nice. So remember, intersecting two lines is not too bad. Um, it's much easier to do in standard form, obviously. And then the other big part today was just... How do you, do you know how to make things parallel or perpendicular to a given line? So like if I gave you the line 6x minus 5y equals 40, and I said find a line that's parallel but goes through, you know, negative 1, 3. If it's parallel, a and b are the same. And then plug in your point to see what c should be. So we get negative 6 minus 15 negative 21. So 6x minus 5y equals negative 21. Boom, done. If you want to be perpendicular um, to this guy and you want to go through, you know, I don't know, 2, negative 3. Perpendicular to this would mean you have to switch their places and switch one of the signs. So I'm going to switch the, five to, the negative 5 to a positive 5 and switch their places. Oops. And then same thing, you're going to plug in your point that you want to be true because then you'll guarantee that that point is on this line. 10 minus 18, so C is negative 8, and then you'll finish your line. Okay, so those are kind of the main ideas. Again, converting back and forth. You're going to do more with it than that, but that's the basic idea. All right, good luck.